At this part of the audit, we're going to be analyzing the blog strategy. And this is uh, among the most important, um, I guess, parts of doing the content strategy. So if we're going to be analyzing on-site, we're going to be analyzing backlinks, we're going to be analyzing content, the blog strategy is going to be one of the most pivotal parts of your content strategy because it is definitively the part of your content strategy that does go on indefinitely. And uh, that, that kind of being said, um, other pages that you might create could kind of be finite after a while, depending on, you know, your practice area and where you're expanding into. So, you know, when you're creating pages, you know, you get into your, your personal injury and then you might get as granular as possible. You might talk about, you know, car accidents and you talk about car accidents, uh, the types of car accidents. It could be like running a red light or blowing a stop sign or whiplash or you know, being uh, rear-ended or being T-boned. And then you can talk about the injuries that came with that. You know, is there back injury? Is neck injury? Was there brain injury? And you can flesh out all those pages. That's great. You can flesh out all your geographies and the certain radius that you're around. And we'll, we'll go into that in more detail after this, but your blog strategy is going to be the one that persists indefinitely because there's always going to be topics, whether it be timely, whether it be what's going on with you, there's always going to be something to discuss. So when we do a blog strategy, the things that we're analyzing are pretty much, there's pretty much like three or four different blogs that can really happen on a website. And if, uh, you know, you work with fine law, the pretty much only one that you'll ever see is, um, arrests or injuries that happen in your community that are kind of like newsworthy. Or sometimes I might talk about something that's very, very general. I'm not, I'm not trying to trash fine law. I just don't agree with their blog strategy, as you can tell. But there's more opportunities to get more um, clever and creative with how you do it. So you're always going to be talking about um, long-tailed keywords, especially with the blog. You save your pages for your short tail, for your so-and-so car accident, for your so-and-so brain injury, for your so-and-so trip and fall. You reserve the blog for more a specific topic. So it's like, what happens if it's trip and fall in Publix? If you're in Florida, what happens if it's a trip and fall in QFC? If you're here in Seattle, what happens if it's a trip and fall or slip and fall or premises liability at a Kroger's or a food line? That's going to be kind of like your long tail. You're answering kind of a specific question that people are going to be asking more inquisitively. Okay, so that's always going to be reserved for your long tail. It's always going to be reserved for something that's newsworthy, whether it be something um, very unique that might be search worthy. Um, a celebrity got in a jet ski accident. Um, the um, senator or governor um, got in a, a, a scooter fender bender. Who knows? It's newsworthy. Um, it could be something in the community. It could be something uh, newsworthy. It could be you know, Uber changed its uh, uh, million dollar personal injury uh, liability uh, ma maximum. I don't know. That's what it is right now. It depends on the state. But something that's more newsworthy, something that's going to be searched, and you're going to be researching that different way. Um, and then maybe the third thing could be kind of a little bit more to do with like the firm, um, add a new lawyer, celebrating something, a charity, a donation, um, you're doing a galley, you're doing, you know, a scholarship. It's going to be something that has to do maybe that's more like firm oriented, news oriented internally. And then um, as far as other blogs, I mean, you're just going to be talking anything that's, that's newsworthy, but that pretty much should cover it. And then we're pretty much going through that and ensuring that that's done on, on a regular basis, depending on um, where you're located. A lot of times when we're working with people, um, other law firms, we're trying to blog, I think about a minimum four to five times a month. Um, you can certainly blog more. I don't think you'd necessarily blog less. Um, sometimes there's people on the team that are working to do it. You can certainly have other people supplement um, an ongoing strategy. And then um, there's not really any particular reason not to blog more. I, I wouldn't say that you have to do it like 30 times a month. You have to have one like every single day. I also wouldn't do a bunch at once and just post them all in the same day. It's, it's, it's consistent. It shows that you have um, kind of a process going on for people on the website. No one wants to see that your last blog was two years ago. It's for Google, you know, it's, you saw like the site map, it gets refreshed. The post sitemap.xml gets refreshed almost on a daily basis. So let's Google know that you're proactive with the website and that certainly does have a benefit long-term from an SEO standpoint.